Hey, you all, Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are in Barberville, West Virginia. And even more specifically than that, we are in front of Billy Bob's Wonderland. Now, I have visited here before, and uh, this is one of the last public showings of the Rock of Fire Explosion, the animatronic band that would perform at Showbiz Pizza. When I came here a few years ago, um, I saw something <laughs> that changed me forever. The, 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 the robots, the animatronics, were not in what you'd say optimal condition. Some would even go as far as saying they are nightmare fuel. The robots would move strangely, they'd have rotten things on their face, droopy faces. It was literally uh, Five Nights at Freddy come to life. But I've been getting a lot of requests recently. People wanted me to return to Billy Bob's Wonderland saying that they have completely refurbished their animatronics, that the show has been restored to what it originally was supposed to look like. So I'm very excited. I wanted to go in there and see what they have done. I would encourage you to check out you maybe go and check out my original video first before viewing this um, to see what the animatronics looked like previously. And uh, I will now show you what they look like now as we head into Billy Bob's Wonderland. So please follow me. Looks like the Lincoln County school children are going on a field trip here to Billy Bob's Wonderland. It's a pretty awesome field trip. There's something I really like about this flaming West Virginia <laughs> on the wall here over the vent. Just searing with flames. Look up there on the awning, actually have Billy Bob there with his little bird friend on his shoulder says pizza place there. This would be the logo for showbiz pizza place. I'll probably remove the word showbiz for legal purposes. All right, look what we have here. <laughs> it is a payphone. Now yesterday in uh, Sutton, West Virginia, we found a working payphone. Let's see if we can go two for two. Okay, it's making a noise. It's not, it's not a dial tone. It's kind of like a low, electronic buzzing let me see if i when i hit the when i hit the when i hit the buttons it doesn't make any noise so we're gonna have to count that non-functional there is a bear welcoming us to billy bob's wonderland that is not billy bob himself though must be one of his friends or relatives now let's head inside of billy bob's wonderland Ooh, look at that floor mat now it says the show selector here is temporarily out of order a uh, shows randomly select every five minutes, so they kind of run constantly, taking five minute breaks. See some of the shows here Crocodile Rock, I Can See Clearly Now, Mrs. Robinson, The Way She Loves Me, Whole New World. Is that is that up from Aladdin? Let's see, Good Vibrations, Don't Turn Around, and Brady Bunch. We'll take a peek here at the animatronics before the show starts. You can see the, uh, as Rolf and Earl, the puppet, right there. Here we have Duke, the dog playing the drums. There's the birthday spider hanging there. There's Fats, the gorilla on the keyboard. Beach Bear back there, playing the guitar. Now, previously I had seen where the Beach Bear, when the show would actually perform, Beach Bear would have a trash bag placed over his torso. So it's good to see him not with a trash bag on. And there's Mitzi Mozzarella, the, the singing mouse that's also a cheerleader. There's a little bear head peeking up out of that log. And then here is Billy Bob himself here at Smitty's Super Service Station. He's got his friend, the Looney Bird. The Looney Bird lives in the trash can there. 
Maybe that's another smaller loony bird. You can see there's also a lot of a lot of moonshine hanging out around Billy Bob. Looks like there's a moonshine still back there. So yeah, we'll uh, stick around and wait for them to start performing a random song. See, there's actually a caribou up there above the stage. This poster here says Billy Bob's Wonderland Rockafire Extravaganza, Saturday, January 29th. That was recently, so I guess I missed this. This must have been uh, some sort of celebration on the newly restored figures. You can see the figures there all have their brains open with tools shoved inside. <laughs> Look at Billy Bob, he's got a screwdriver and a wrench jammed in his brain. And here we have some artwork of the Rockafire explosion. Oh, they're starting. They're starting. Here we go. We take a look at them in motion. All right. Oh, you can actually hear him banging the drums. He actually can play the drums. There's Fats hammering out on the piano there. You can see the, them dancing. Their motions look smooth and non-horrifying. You can see the moon back there. A little bear popping up and down there. Yes, this looks, this looks very nice. You see him singing over there. So yeah, it, it, it does. This is this is a, a reversal. Previously, Billy Bob was synonymous with horror. Now it's just a nice, uh, put together animatronic band. Kind of see them all jamming there. The main center stage show, jamming out on their instruments. Oh, here we go. Billy Bob is playing. See the the Looney Bird coming up out of the gas can as uh, Billy Bob jams on his guitar there. And there is Rolf and his uh, puppet Earl singing. You see everybody jamming all at once. Even Rolf over here is singing along. You can see here they have a game called Cats and Mice, actually based on Whack-A-Mole. And uh, yeah, that's it's, it's fitting because the creator of the Rockafire Explosion, Aaron Fector, actually created uh, Whack-A-Mole as well. Let's give uh, Cats and Mice a try here. Put in two tokens. Oh, another token in there. Get our hammer. And oh, here they go. Okay, I think you're supposed to hit. I think you're supposed to hit the mice, not the cats. So it takes a little bit of thought and skill. Oh, don't don't want to hit that cat. Mouse, 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 mouse. Did I get? Did I win? Go on, you can make it. Collect your tickets. Collect our tickets. Are we tickets? Oh, keep coming, keep coming. There we go. Little tiny carousel there for children to ride. It's very cool to come back to Billy Bob's Wonderland and see the animatronics restored. It, it looked for a while like they were just going to continue to decrode until they were motionless lumps of metal and rubber on the ground, but someone has come in, someone has fixed the robots, and they put on a nice little show. Now I couldn't think of passing through this area without stopping at Hillbilly Hot Dogs, right here next to the Hillbilly Gas Station. And just look at that massive hot dog up there. Up here's a little place for the kids. Teeny Weeny Land, little house there. And look at all these old metal Tonka trucks. These things were super fun when I was a kid. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I had, I think I had the dump truck. But yeah, these are a lot of fun. And these are old, these are like antique. As you see back here, you can actually dine inside one of these school buses here. So you can eat a hot dog in an abandoned school bus. And as you can see here from the front of the building, just an absolute wonderful collection of junk 
adorning the building. Oh, look at this. That is a creepy figure right there. And there's some sort of weird parrot hanging right there. You have a tree here adorned with dangling baseball hats. And this tree here is covered with license plates. Oh, and I do like that old wooden TV set. I'm a huge fan of those. Then we got some boots hanging over here. We have a shoe tree. Oh man, Vader is looking a little rough. There's a, another dining area, school bus. Let's actually go peek inside here. Oh, look above there, there's a really old car resting on top. Yeah, let's peek in this dining area here. Oh yeah, nice, ni lots of nice little seats. Relaxing, this one's kind of a private dining area. They actually have a chapel here so people get married at Hillbilly Hot Dogs, the Hillbilly Hot Dogs Wedding Chapel. And then you have the Kissing Cousins Marion booth. So, you know, no judgment here. I don't know what West Virginia law is. Some states allow you to uh, marry your cousin, but if you take a peek here, on the porch, a nice little glider there. It does appear that the chapel is locked. Although, look at that, you got a cool old Billy Bass, uh, Big Mouth Billy Bass there. It says, grinning like a possum pooping peach seeds. I don't necessarily think he'd be grinning. It's a big old Hillbilly Hot Dogs Moonshine still right there. You can see some feet poking out of that bathtub along with some pink flamingos. A little photo op here. You can be the mom, you can be the dad, you can even be the baby. It looks like dad there's eating the home wrecker dog. Now I have actually, there's a challenge. If you eat this in 20 minutes, you get a t-shirt for free. This is a uh, 15 inch, one pound hot dog covered with all imaginable toppings. I came here before and I actually ate all that in 20 minutes. I have the t-shirt at home to prove it. All right, we're heading in. Don't pull on this doorknob, because it's a trick. Gotta pull on this one. So yeah, here we are inside. Lots of weirdness around us and everything is autographed. Everything you look at, look at has to have autographs on it. Look how much they autographed poor Kermit up there. Little autograph doll there and look at that look at that dummy head there with the flower all right and here's where we eat I'm gonna come in here and wait for my hot dogs to be ready you can see the bus oh, yeah. seat there so we uh, yeah, walk to the through the bus here yeah just look at look at all these little autographs here on the uh, on the table and on the inside of the bus here all right, my hot dogs have arrived. Now they are known for very unusual hot dogs, so I made sure to get three of the weirdest hot dogs I could find on the menu. So let's crack into these. First up, we have the pizza dog. You can see pepperoni on there, melted cheese, marinara sauce, and the hot dog right buried in there. All right, let's try this pizza dog there. Mm. Mm. Pretty good. Mix of the flavor of the hot dog, the flavor of the pepperoni, which is a very interesting combination. I'd say this one is a win. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Ooh, some cheese on my chin. How embarrassing. All right, we continue to get even weirder. This is a this is the egg dog. It's got scrambled eggs and cheese on it. Is there some sort of sauce? Let's see. Don't know. That is. Not sure what kind of sauce that is. It may just be ketchup, actually. But uh, let's bite into the egg dog. This makes me a little nervous, but yeah, we have the egg dog. I just, yeah, it does look like it is ketchup on it and a nice, uh, nice, I said scrambled eggs, but this is almost, almost like a fried egg. So, let's, uh, down the hatch. That's, 
it's not disgusting. That's really good. I always get nervous with eggs on things because it can be a little touchy with eggs. It's got oh, it's got nacho, nacho cheese on it as well. Mm. We have another winner. That wasn't one I was even really expecting to like, but it's good. And here we have possibly the strangest of the dogs. This is the Pine Appalachian dog. It has pineapple on it and ham and it looks like barbecue sauce. The people always ask me, do you like pineapple on your pizza? And I'm like, eh, kind of ambivalent about it. But people never ask me, do you like pineapple on your hot dog? And I guess that is what we are about to find out here in just a moment. If I've ever been this nervous about eating a hot dog, the Pine Appalachian dog. Mm. Pretty good. It's got the barbecue sauce. It's a nice, nice accent to the uh, the ham. Love the ham. The ham is good. Pineapples are a little weird. I don't know. Honestly, they get a little weirded out when you combine sweet stuff with hot dogs. But I think this. I think especially if you love pineapple pizza, I think this would be a home run. So, mm, very. I'm sorry. Let me. Finish Jewish. So I don't talk with my mouth full. Mm. Yeah, some very fascinating, interesting uh, hot dogs. That um, yeah, there's there's others on the menu. Weird ones. Uh, I do want to try in the future. So every time I come by, I want to tr come by here and try a few of the weird hot dogs. These are all, and, and, and that's what that, that's the key to doing weird stuff. Is you got to make it taste good. You know, it's easy to like make something crazy. Like the carrot dog, just put a carrot on a hot dog. You're like, it's crazy, it's the carrot dog. But no, you gotta put a little more thought into that. You gotta make it taste good. And I think they have succeeded. This looks like a deer with a drive through speaker on his head. Another fine example of what happens when you put taxidermy outdoors. We got a set of coffin daffer crosses. You see these across the country with one gold cross in the middle, two blue ones on the outside. They were all put up by the same person, Bernard Coffin Daffer. And uh, they're, they're pretty common here in the uh, West Virginia area. And uh, you can find them anywhere in the country. So, you know, keep an eye out for them. See an old mail pouch tobacco barn advertising mail pouch chewing tobacco. Uh, these are pretty rare. These are, you know, these are painted on barns, much like the Rock City barns, but uh, not very many of them left. And some of them have been taken down because technically it is illegal to advertise uh, tobacco that way. I don't even know if mail pouch is still uh, in existence though. So yesterday we visited two West Virginia cryptids the Flatwoods Monster and the West Virginia Bigfoot, the old man of the mountain. But today, today, we have driven over here to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the home of the Mothman sightings, the hometown of Mothman. Now, uh, Mothman, for those of you not familiar, pretty much to me, the king of cryptids. He appeared on the bridge here in Point Pleasant and um, either warning people of an upcoming crash or causing a upcoming crash where the bridge fell into the river when it was full of cars. And again, some people thought he may have been warning people that the bridge collapse was going to happen. Others thought maybe he caused the bit bridge collapse. Mothman, his alignment is very mysterious. He could be evil. He could be a savior. We don't know. We don't know if he is a cryptid. 
We don't know if he is a ghost. We don't know if he is a demon or an alien. He's so mysterious. He pretty much falls into every category of the paranormal. And here in Point Pleasant, they celebrate Mothman. He is the the thing that the town is known for. And I, and I, and I agree, the town should be proud of being home to such a remarkable and amazing cryptid. Mothman is so important to the town of Point Pleasant, they actually erected this metal statue in the center of town of the Mothman. Just look at his face. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the meaning behind this is, but someone has left an offering for Mothman. They have left a can of black beans. I don't know what the significant is, significance is of uh, leaving black beans for Mothman. I don't know if he likes eating black beans. I don't know if there's some sort of strange inside joke, but uh, black beans for Mothman. And they also have here in Point Pleasant the world's only Mothman Museum. I've stopped in here before, but always want to check in to see what's happening in the world of Mothman. See in here they have a variety of Mothman themed t-shirts. Some other Mothman merch. Cute little Mothman statue there. And little Mothman Christmas ornaments. This is the Fallout Mothman statue. Of course, Mothman appeared in a video game called Fallout uh, 76, I believe. And uh, Mothman's actually featured, the town of Point Pleasant is featured, and I guess they used a different version of the statue. It's adorable. A little Mothman plushie there. Up there, a little statue of Mothman, along with this creepy taxidermied owl. Different Mothman plushies. This one's very kawaii. And here, hiding behind the lady shirts, is one of the no good men in black. The men in black actually first appeared here in Point Pleasant. They are some sort of weird interdimensional time police. See Mothman right there, hovering up above us. All right, now heading in to the museum itself. Oh. While Mothman is best known for its appearance on the Silver Bridge before the collapse, the first sighting was actually what they call the TNT area, not too far from here, where uh, some teenagers went to make out and saw Mothman fly over their car. Some artifacts from the TNT area here. This is a female worker's outfit, and then some small relics. There's some railroad spikes, a J. It's a replica of the power plant at the TNT factory. This is not there anymore. And uh, these are the igloos, or ammo bunkers, that would be at the TNT plant. These are still there. You can actually go out and go inside these. I've actually been there. Um, it says that they were meant to store ammo and were meant to be disguised so they couldn't be blown up during World War II. Another version of the Mothman here, more moth-like. Different, uh, different people have different interpretations of them. It's a very mothy interpretation. Look out behind you, Sheriff. Mothman's lurking. A lot of people first heard of Mothman in uh, this movie. This is actually technically the first place that I ever saw Mothman was the movie The Mothman Prophecy starring Richard Gere. They have some screen used police outfits here. And then they have this blanket that, uh, according to the sign, came in contact with Richard Gere. So Richard Gere cuddled with this blanket right here. Up here we have a styrofoam piece of cement that was used in the movie. These are the sketches of the Mothman used in the movie. There's a uh, a glass windshield piece used in the car crash scene. But no one can convince me that this isn't the greatest prop from the Mothman movies. The chapstick! Yes, there's a scene where uh, Richard Gere is on the phone 
with the mysterious Indrid Cold. And he says, what's in my hand? And Indrid Cold says, chapstick. And he slowly opens his hand, revealing chapstick. It's a model of the silver bridge that crashed. You can see the Mothman up there on top of the bridge, either warning people or causing the uh, horrific crash. And when I say horrific crash, it truly was horrific. It was loaded with cars when it went down and tons of people died. And there's a piece of the metal from the Silver Bridge disaster. It's a Red Cross armband right there that was used when they were trying to rescue people from the bridge uh, after they plunged into the water. It's a collection of different Mothman figures, a lot of different interpretations. And oh, and look at that. We even had the Flatwoods Monster from yesterday making an appearance. I think in some ways Mothman has become a real phenomenon. I know a lot of more people know about him now. He's got a much larger profile. It's a little mini version of the statue outside. Here is a Mothman costume. He uh, comes out to play during the Mothman Festival, which they have in September every year. Oh, look at his face. It's men in black lurking all throughout this museum. Yeah, the men in black, which later inspired the Will Smith movie, that was all started here in uh, West Virginia, in Point Pleasant, after the Mothman attacks. I think they're sometimes seen as like cleanup agents like there in the movie trying to convince people that they didn't see things but uh, one thing about the moth about the the men in black that often gets uh, forgotten is that they appear to be non-human they appear to be in human disguises they spoke weird as if they did not really understand the human language in its entirety another men in black lurking over here I think it's the theater room they play videos about Mothman, now playing the Search for Mothman documentary. There's also just a soda fountain counter in here as well. Oh, I see these little Mothmen right here. These were, uh, I believe you, these were used in the show Monster Quest, if anyone remembers Monster Quest, where they tested to see if cryptids were real or not. So I actually loved that show back when it was on. Uh, this Mothman here, this is a really cool version. You can see the UFO in the back, like the unique wing frills he has there. This is John Keel, who originally investigated the Mothman sightings and wrote the book the Mothman Prophecies, and here is his white suit. He actually wore this suit to the dedication of the Mothman statue. Oh wow, I like this Mothman too. Very unique one here, the gold, golden Mothman. Different Mothman artwork down here. Little Mothman doll there. There's rubber Mothman, and there's a Mothman from a uh, from some sort of card game. That's not Metazoo, because it says 1996. That's not Magic the Gathering either. I don't, anyone knows what card game that is, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Ah, Mothman. Would you hire this person? No, honestly, probably. Probably not. <laughs> Here's a mail pouch wall dog, apparently mail pouch chewing tobacco, very popular in this part of West Virginia. And here's the location of the original Mothman Museum. It is now the Point Pleasant Trading Company and they still sell uh, Mothman merchandise. A lot of cool gifts in here, but of course, a strong Mothman cryptid flavoring. Someone sent me one of these ones. It was actually the Mothman version, but they have the Yeti, Jersey Devil, and Chupacabra versions. I'll actually have one of these in my bunker. These are 
handmade. I bought it off of uh, Etsy. Uh, this woman makes wonderful, wonderful cryptid crafts. And look at that, we got adorable little Hodag. The uh, Hodag, the Wisconsin monster, represented here in Point Pleasant. My home, my home state monster. There we have the old-fashioned Sasquatch. And then we have something called Sheep Squatch right there. It says Mothman is a community asset. Well, I, I agree completely. Here is Cryptid Soap. You got the Flatwoods Monster, which you saw yesterday. The Bigfoot, which you also saw yesterday. And the Hometown Boy Mothman. In the drink cooler here, we have Mothman Root Beer, as well as Cheerwine, one of my favorite sodas, and Moxie, one of my least favorite sodas. So this store does carry a lot of stuff made by independent artists. I remember these uh, these posters, these sideshow posters from a booth during the Mothman Festival. Some cool stuff. Some more of these wild hair creatures. There's a Sasquatch right there. He's got a camera so we can try to take pictures of other Sasquatches and sell them for money. And look at that. We have a little Cthulhu right there. There's Mothman right there. And up there, we, I guess that's the TNT area. You can see various monsters peeking out. Oh, look at this. Looks like Sasquatch is ready for St. Patrick's Day. Are you ready for St. Patrick's Day? So I did buy myself a nice, refreshing Mothman root beer. Ah, that's good. Let's wash down those three crazy hot dogs. <laughs> and what have we learned today, folks? What have we learned today? We learned that there is a second life out there for robots that are slowly turning demonic. We've learned that pineapple is good on hot dogs. And we have learned that Mothman is still the king of West Virginia. Appreciate you guys watching this video. If you want to subscribe, it'll let you know when new videos are coming out. I do try to post almost daily. I do take a day off here or there. Um, I have visited the 48 continental United States filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. I continue to travel around the country chronicling my adventures here on YouTube. And uh, if you want to help out the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. And we also sell enamel pins in the Etsy shop. There will be a new pin coming in the upcoming weeks. Um, all that is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat on the water, and this Mothman in the air. Until tomorrow morning, folks, this one's in the bag.